Well, the prog metal scene has seen a lot of solo albums coming on out. You know, just last year we had Michael Romeo from Symphony X, Charlie Griffith from Haken. Um, speaking of Haken, Ross Jennings put out a solo work. Um, Rio Okamoto put out one. Uh, even James LeBray from Dream Theater, I think, last year or the year before. So it was only a matter of time before Inar Solberg uh, came out with his own work. So let's dive into it. <laughs> Sixteen by Inar Solberg. So Inar uh, is the lead singer, vocalist, and uh, lead lyricist and singer-songwriter for Leprous, uh, you know, a Norwegian progressive metal band, uh, and just kind of like really rocketed onto the stage. Uh, and I've been really following them since the congregation, and then went back and listened to their entire discography, and I've been following them ever since. And one of the things that really got me to Leprous was the singer uh lyrical content you know inar always brought such intensity and earnestness within his lyrics and within his singing uh and i i loved his aggressive side as well as his more intimate side uh and i feel like 16 really does capture that and the whole mythos for 16 was 16 for inar was really when he started to become more of who he was where he started to realize what life was really all about, where he started to really take charge, you know, really kind of work through some of his demons that he has, um, you know, and really battling with that kind of mental anguish and kind of rooting a lot of these tracks into that kind of coming out of it, but still battling a lot of those same battles and reflecting on it. And it's, it's a very personal album in that sense. And I really enjoy that. And, even because this album is so personal, he has a lot of features on this one and a lot of individuals coming together to help him out. And, you know, a bunch of them that he's already worked with before, but a few new faces as well. The one that I really, really enjoy and one that I was so excited to see on here was Ben Levin from Bent Knee uh, by bringing in this new area, this new aspect of it. And one of the things that I really enjoy is that a lot of these tracks that have features on it really is a collaborative effort between both Inar and whoever it is that has a feature on it. The two work very well and very collaboratively together. And you can tell each one kind of knew the assignment and kept it in the framework of the album of 16. Uh, one that's a very, you know, familiar face, and I want to try to pronounce some of these ones, uh, Tori Guns. Guns Banson, uh, Tonti from, uh, you know, creating one of the last tracks and one of the longest tracks on this record. Love how it really takes its time to really open up, to really develop itself. Because Inar didn't come into this album looking to make a, uh, a progressive metal album very similar to Leprous. He wanted this to be a little bit more on the introspective singer-songwriter, quicker, shorter tracks. And for the most part, he succeeded. But unfortunately, you know, he started to falter a little bit with the last Last track but I'm not gonna fault him for it at all and right from the beginning you kind of get the idea and the essence that we are going to be playing with it's very similar to the same vibes that I got from the last three albums of um, Leprous with Melinda pitfalls and um, Aphelion you know it's very introspective very somber uh, and that's found within the title track uh, which features Raphael uh, Winsroth Brown I think is how you pronounce it Brown uh, I love also the fact that the the instrumentations that are used on here are actually the music that you're hearing. You know, there's no synthesized or overly processed items on here. If you hear a string section, it's from a string section. And I really enjoy that. It just adds that production value a little bit higher than what most solo records would have allowed for. And even though, you know, Anar didn't set out to make a progressive rock or a progressive metal album, I still think he really has some really tasty prog moments on here. Like the second track of Remember Me starts off very somber. We have, you know, Anar playing a lot with the synthesized rhythm section on here. But once it gets to the halfway mark and it really crescendos and explodes into this big soundscape you know it's got this big metal aspect of it uh even though the leads aren't the blasting guitars or the you know the blasting of drums 
everything that ties together is huge and big and creates a really gargantuan track. I also like the fact that Inara is stretching his legs and trying new things. Like the third track of A Beautiful Life has a very almost techno house beat to it. You know, there's there's like this kind of like very quick rhythm styles within the synthesizers. It's reminding me of like the Blade Runner soundtrack from Vangelis and I really enjoy him trying new things within it. And this like really quick, really syncopated aspect is also featured in the fourth track of Where All the Twigs Broke featuring Star of Ash. And man, that track slaps. Like once we get into that violin work, and I believe it's a violin picking, it could just be synthesizers. Oh man, it, it blew me away. Like the command, the tightness of this, this is where Inar knows how to work with other people and use those strengths to service the song beautifully. I was I was blown away. And this comes to one of the best tracks on this album, which is Metacognitive, which starts off again very similar to how a lot of the tracks already started, but when it starts to build and we get to that really meaty like halfway mark and into the second half of this track where we have that burn 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 I can't help but get lulled and hypnotized by this really heavy, really meaty and hooky aspect of it. And oh, it really hits, which provides the momentum into one of the more kooky and strange tracks on this. The One of the more unique tracks, which is Home featuring Ben Levin that I was kind of, you know, alluding to earlier. And Ben does a great job of really pushing in our out of the comfort zone that he's kind of put himself into within this record and really kind of test the boundaries of where this kind of music wants to go to with this almost hip hop aspect of it you know and i love ben's playing styles and i love how ben is always able to blend genres and really try unique things just for the hell of it you know it just it takes all the things that i love from bentney and really puts it right into this album i love how bombastic in art is at the beginning of this track really howling it out into the abyss i love the quirky soundscapes that we have with the synthesizers even overlaying this kind of trap beat of the r&b that ben has within his section of the track man it plays so well and it's one of those things that on paper shouldn't work but when you actually listen to it you're like oh no this works and it works very well and the next three tracks are very unique into whoever it is that they have featured on it blue light featuring asger mygind i believe is how you pronounce it uh going into grotto featuring magnus burmark Again, I think that's how you pronounce it. And Splitting the Soul featuring Ish... Ishan, oh man, some of these, I'm so sorry guys, I'm really, really bad with pronunciation, I'm trying here. Um, but they're all still rooted in what Anard's sandbox is providing, you know, like there's this overlay of violins and this dripping of Anard's singing voice, his falsetto is so powerful and so commanding, but I also love how each one comes in and really puts their own thumbprint on it. Blue Light is very somber, but also very menacing. It has this darkness tinge to it. Grotto is very bombastic and very in your face, and it's very twisted and off kilter. Splitting the Soul is intense and very bombastic. It's got this really sharp edge to it that I really enjoy, especially once we get into that screaming style of singing that I haven't heard from Leprous or Anara for quite a while. So this really bombastic and very hard tinge just, uh, it just, turns that knife in you. And then we have Over the Top, which is a very somber, very intimate track. It starts off very slow. It lulls you into the, almost this false sense of security so that the final couple of minutes on here just punch you right in the gut. It's big, it's explosive, it's very bombastic. And yeah, it sets the stage very, very well for the final track, the big 11 minute track of The Glass is Empty featuring uh, Tody Ger Gerbsch? On. I, again, I'm so sorry. Uh, and this was one of the big, big highlights for me. I love the longer stretches of music. It's very soundscapey, very, um, you know, cinematic in its approach. And it was reminding me of the best moments from the last three records. So in the end, I found myself really, really loving this album. It's on par. If not, I would say even a little bit better than the last three records, mainly because they always come back to this main route that Anar is playing with, which is reflections on where he came before, where he was, how far he's come, and how much of a road he still has going forward, centered and like kind of grounded in the different features and the different variations that he has coming on it. 
there's always this give and go, this kind of give and take aspect that I really, really found myself loving. And it, it made me come back for more because it's not necessarily a mixed grab bag because you still have those overlays of um, synths, those overlays of real strings, and the overlay of Inar's vocal works that provides the grounding for everything else to play around. I, I kept coming back to this because it was all those variations that made that grounding really flourish and really something special. So yeah, this is one that I really, really found myself enjoying. And for my final rating, I will say 16 by Anar Solberg is one that I would absolutely download. You know, this is one to have in your computer. This is one to have on the go. Uh, you know, I want to support this one because you can see the production value on this one. You know, this isn't just the run of a mill. We're going to hire a bunch of producers to make the sounds that we want. This was, we're going to hire the musicians to get the sounds that we want. And you can see that quality on the page. You know, I really, really enjoyed that. And I, I kept coming back to it. You know, this was a great one. This was one that you want to spend some time with to really get all the nooks and crannies. If you're a Leprous fan, you're going to really, really love this album. I think you're in for a real treat. And I think this is a really good starting point if you're also new to Leprous and Anar's singing style and his kind of vocal range. I think you'll get something really, really fun out of this one. So, yeah, that's what I've got for 16. What did you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And that's all I've got for you guys today. That's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.